Welcome to Phase On Labs, the internet's premier Metroid Futurist podcast, powered by the World One One Podcast Network. I am, as always, your host, Larry the Bearded Wonder. Joining me this week is Michael Space Jump Spastic Brown. <laughs> whatever, whatever the most recent accident I had was, I smell French fries for some reason. Sure, that's not burnt toast. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not having a stroke. That's great, Mother. Keep those periodic updates coming. <laughs> and every week we get together and we bang our phase on rocks together and see if we can make a new goddamn Metroid game because we want it and we should have it. And so should you. So let's uh, let's dive in this week. I got one for you. And it's uh, it, it's a rare case where I've got one that's maybe kind of middling fleshed out the the creative thought process on this actually kind of went backwards for me um i, I kind of started with uh, the ending and tried to work my way back so we'll see how well i did i want me a a third person over the shoulder style maybe not even over the shoulder but kind of that that pulled back camera like we got in uh, Other M or hell, even God of War. You know, somewhere kind of in between those two. I feel like that's the way to go. For, uh, like one, two, three, classic. Okay. So almost fixed cameras then. I, I, I feel like that would work best for some of this. Okay. That's what my gut says. I want to see this game start with Samus having been finally caught and incarcerated by the Federation. And she's trying to break out. Like, this is full-blown prison escape Metroidvania. Okay. And in the process, obviously, you know, there's going to be some toe-to-toe -to -toe, uh, mix-ups with the, the guards as well as some of the other assorted, you know, convicts that the Federation has locked away. I feel like there's a lot of fun potential in this take it a totally different direction that the series just has not explored I I like it like there's lots of opportunity now they can't take her suit from her mm -hmm. cause like she that's mystical and magical so she, they can't take uh -huh. that from her but what about the upgrades now they could hypothetically uh, you could MacGuffin uh something in to where kind of Deadpool style it essentially like negates her ability to call out her suit okay that's that's an option so I feel like maybe that's where it starts is with the the initial uh, breakout and she has to find something to undo that restraint so that she can get her suit out yes so there, there's a solid starting point. Um, from there, I'm thinking various upgrades and abilities come from picking off the uh, the bosses and taking parts of them. How do you mean? I'm thinking we've probably got lots of uh, lots of convicts locked up in space prison that have various augmentations and modifications grafted into them and when she finally manages to you know take them down as boss fights the you know the bigger non-standard goon ones that she rips those uh, various augmentations out of them and manages to essentially kind of hodgepodge them to her suit. Okay. Well, here's another option. What is almost kind of a la lockdown from Transformers Animated? Ooh. Yeah, okay. I thought that gets your attention. Yeah. Here's, here's <laughs> another option. What if at certain points she meets characters that have unique abilities, and she brings them with, saying, promising, "I'll help you get out of here if you help me get out of here." And. That's how she ends up with these abilities for a while, by literally having them in tow somehow. 
it, it's almost more of an indirect um I'm think oh god damn it what am I thinking of um kind of like a squad based game a little bit like kind of like Lost Vikings mhm or try Lost that or you know maybe a, a tinge of like Pikmin ish yeah uh, oh uh Bookbinder was another one I recently downloaded I haven't gotten to start in on yet but that'd be another example I think okay so that's not a bad thought either and that's uh you know what you could do even you could add a little randomization to it so when you get to the end of the boss fight the uh they're presented with an option of look i can either kill you now and take your shit or you can come with me and the computer randomizes which selection it makes every playthrough yeah. So some of the some of the abilities you'll end up with direct control over, and some you have to kind of navigate in more of a squad based manner. Yeah. Ooh, for drama, what if most of these people she put there? I was thinking that. At least some, for sure. I definitely feel like that's gotta. There, there's got to be at least some. But if you think about it, you never really hear much about the. Uh, you know, the bad guy's getting caught in a metro, just, you know, killed and blown up along just with the rest of the planet. The planet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Boom? Yes, boom. <laughs> so, but yeah. Um, you could almost add a slight RG, or RPG element in that, like, in order to convince certain ones to help you, you gotta bring them certain things. So, a la... Uh, Onimusha 2 mm-hmm. giving gifts and things like that to try to win their favor I could maybe see that you almost kind of have to play your luck with you know which guards maybe you can bribe yeah that's another thing to get around a few things um, I, I feel like it should be a, a lightly applied element though yeah definitely you can't do that all the time but, you know, a big, huge uh, space prison complex, I, I think, presents itself really well as a, a world design for a Metroidvania. Mm-hmm. Lots of, uh, and especially in, you know, that kind of semi-3D with, like I said, you know, the other M got a war camera style there. Um, so you can 3D out that map, but you have the the main corridors and then you know you're looking for hints in some of the cells maybe that there's there's some hidden tunnels dug out or uh, a chance to get into like the the water system to try and get around some of the the facility yeah so now how much stealth are we talking here then I wasn't inclined to go super stealthy that wasn't my thought, but I, you're, you're right. I, I could definitely see that being a piece of it. Um, I honestly hadn't thought about that part, but that's not a bad idea. I, I don't think you'd go much more stealth than what you got in Dread. Fair. That, that feels about right. So, I feel like that's maybe not a bad mechanic to work with either. Was like the Phantom Cloak would be a good way to go about it. Mm-hmm. Once you re-unlock it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But no, I, I feel like this whole thing should somewhere culminate with uh, a uh, a crooked prison warden who's maybe got like some back deal dealings with the uh, black ops side of the Federation been doing all the dirty shit for years now all right like it's entirely possible maybe that uh that that black ops part of the federation has a deal with the warden so that inmates occasionally you know disappear out of his custody transferred supposedly never to be seen again and you find out that they're they're essentially being used for experimentation 
Because we know that's something they like to do. Right. I think this could that, piece that together could really well. Finally, that could be how she finally gets loose. There you go. Is they're taking her for experimentation because they know she's a unique situation, so they're going to want all the detail they can get. That's when she breaks out. There you go. That's the way to do it. So, at some point in there, there there's got to be a terrible, pr- there's got to be like a, you know, awful prison food comment made. Yes. There, there's got to be something where like, that's gross. I've got Metroid siblings that wouldn't eat that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it's got to happen. I definitely think, too, one of the things that would be really neat to see is somewhere mid-game, maybe like a solid two-thirds of the way through, you get almost a, a horde mode scene where it's just surviving waves of you know, goon inmates and kind of mid-tier uh, baddies as well where to cause you know distraction and chaos the the cell doors are all opened and basically everybody gets let loose and it's a giant prison riot okay so i feel like prison riot is definitely something that should be explored here it'd be a shame to have all this awesome space prison shit and no fucking prison riot Can that's just not okay there's one thing i need to see what do we got i need to, like as I said, we've already discussed the concept that she put some of these people here. Mm-hmm. I, I want her to reenact the scene from the Watchmen. That you're not, I'm not ah. in here with you, you're in here with me. <laughs> Same gruff voice and everything. <laughs> Dude, there's an idea we should play with at some point, like a Rorschach power suit. Yes. That should happen. I feel like we have the creativity to come up with something good for that sometime. I firmly believe. Yeah, I think we could do something fun with that. So, but that's that's for a different episode, a different day. Oh, what else do we need to have in here? I know what we need. What? This story, this game, needs a narrator. It needs narration. Okay. And it's got to be Morgan Freeman. Shawshank Redemption. <laughs> hmm You mispronounced Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> uh I was just watching some stuff with him in it in the last couple of weeks too, actually. But no, all, all told though, I I feel like there's definitely uh, an opportunity to explore some pieces of this this universe that I don't think I've really ever heard anybody bring up or talk about. And that that kind of makes me happy. You know, the whole prison colony system. Um, You're flushing out the, the Federation a lot more, too. Because yeah. for, for as huge as the Metro universe is, the universe hasn't really been poked at at all. No, not at all. So. I think the one piece where I feel like this might suffer, though, is the... Y- you can't... It doesn't feel like there's... Nope, I have a fix for that. I was just going to say, I I feel like the the environment would be kind of samey all the way throughout. But I started thinking, given that this facility has to house, you know, their, their assorted convicts and criminals from all over their universe, you've probably got to have some different, uh, bio environments set up for certain species to house them right I'm like nope there's a fix for that I felt pretty good about that 
<laughs> I had a problem, and I or I almost had a problem, but I caught myself. Can like, Crocodile be the warden? Yes. <laughs> I'm fucking here for it. <laughs> Maybe not Krokemeyer specifically, but another one of his species. Yes, because he needs more love. <laughs> right. No, I think that'd be a fun way to bring back Krokemeyer, honestly. You know, work him in as the fucking warden. I'm, I'm God, I'm really okay with that. That makes me so happy inside. Yeah. It makes me a little upset I hadn't thought of it, but it makes me happy inside knowing it now. <laughs> so, I definitely feel like we should have some uh, some solid kind of maybe blues industrial music behind this. I'm thinking a little sci-fi industrial. blues industrial. I'm thinking, well, I think you can cycle back and forth between that and just straight up industrial. Agreed. Like, obviously, they're going to be, they're going to have something for these creatures to do. They're, it's a mining facility. They put in the prisoners into mining. Um, it's an option. Yeah. No, that's not a bad option either. There's, there's plenty you could do with that right. as far as opening up, like, another area and maybe tossing in some specific mechanics. It'll be like the part in a brutal legend where the headbangers are breaking rocks with their heads. <laughs> There's a game I haven't thought about in ages. That game was criminally underrated. <laughs> Agreed. It was also misadvertised, though. It was very misadvertised. Like, I'm glad it was, because otherwise I wouldn't have bought it. <laughs> it was a great fucking story. <laughs> Oh yeah. So, but no, I, I feel like too. There's there's an opportunity where you know going through those mines, that there's at least one or two abilities that should be added that are essentially just e mining equipment that she grabbed out of there and managed to get out with. Sonic drill. Mm hmm. Shit like that. Yeah. No, I want something. I want something a little nastier. I want like a. God, some some sort of nasty like buzzsaw, a la like Dead Space. Okay, I'm also thinking a a bomb that doesn't work in morph ball form. Ooh, there we go. I think she literally almost has to bowl away from her because it's dangerous to her. Mm hmm. Like it'll take out certain types of walls and shit. Um, th ooh, you hmm. I I'm kind of thinking a, uh, like a gravity drop bomb. Yeah. Like something that's meant to be kind of tossed over a ledge. So it's, it's almost got like a grenade throw mechanic to it. Yeah. It'd be, the sec it'd, it'd be the second time at least she got a grenade style weapon. Because they did that once with Hunters, is one of the specials. And it was a lot of fun. I'd, I'd be okay with bringing that back. So. Hmm. So, I, I feel like we've. We've kind of fleshed this out pretty nicely for a for something that was kind of a half cocked idea for me this week. Mm -hmm. Now I've th this is what I mean when I say this kind of worked backwards for me though. Mm -hmm. The idea started in my head with a title, and then my brain started working on what works with this title, and I started working backwards. So I've got something in mind, but I'm curious if you've got anything first. I don't. Okay. Because I'm going to say it, and it's going to feel real good. Like, you're going to want to say it, because it's going to sound fucking awesome. And like something you want to play. Coming this summer, Metroid Lockdown. 
All right. I hate you. <laughs> you want to play it now, don't you? I kind of do. <laughs> mm-hmm. But no, it's it, like the words popped into my head and I'm like, that's a Metroid game, but I don't know how yet, but I'm going to figure it the fuck out. And that's what I spent the last couple of days doing. <laughs> that's uh, that's our pitch for Metroid Lockdown. That's it for us this week here on Phase on Labs. I want to say thank you to my partner, Michael, for coming and hanging out with me. Thank you to everybody that tuned in this week. And, uh, you know, you can catch us here on the World 1-1 Podcast Network every Monday. And if this is your jam and you've got an awesome idea, make sure you uh, hit us up on Twitter. And we would love to have you on and have you share your awesome Metroid pitch with us and with the world. Uh, go hit us up over on Twitter at Phazon Labs. And uh, you can find that and everything else in the show notes, including links to Discord and Podbean and Good Pods and all that great stuff. That's it for us, and we'll be back next week here on the World 101 Podcast Network. Press start to engage your mind. We'll see you next mission, everybody. Peace! <laughs>